Antonetta, congratulations, a huge win, especially with the black pieces, I imagine. Before we jump into the game, which was tremendously exciting, um, how do you feel? You've now joined the leaders with five and a half points. Well, it, it feels very good, of course. I had some time to rest yesterday in the free day, so it's very good to manage to win the game today. Things got very unusual right from the beginning. Take us through what happened in the opening uh, stage. Uh, well, I mean, I played uh, this uh, D6 move in the Rio Lopez. I'm not sure how to... Do I move from here? Yeah, or move? you can click on the moves if you prefer. Uh -huh, okay. So, castles, bishop D7. Uh, that's all normal. And C4. And I, I like this move bishop g4 here because the fight is mm -hmm. over the d4 square so i mean it looks slightly unusual that you play first bishop d7 and then bishop g4 but i believe after c4 it is uh, a playable move and uh, yeah after that it uh, it got uh, quickly very yeah you can click the moves on the screen uh -huh, if you so, want yeah. or yeah so it was d4 takes uh, but uh, you know white should prove uh, the compensation because I, I'm just uh, developing here and of course Maria she tried to play very active but I during the game I didn't have the feeling that actually white has full compensation mm -hmm. I mean I never felt like I was in trouble maybe mm -hmm. it was not better for black but uh, I didn't feel that I was worse maybe Maybe I was wrong. No, I, I don't think know. your feeling is correct. <laughs> so, uh, what happened here? If you want, yeah. you can also click on the moves on the annotation uh -huh. instead. Okay. If you want to also skip forward. Yeah. So, here it was, uh, let's say, interesting moment. Okay, queen takes c6, king f8, and... Well, I mean, I was quite happy with the outcome uh, of the opening because, okay, Black is pawn up, and there is some compensation, of course, because uh, my king is on f8, but I didn't feel that this much because I have very strong center. So Actually, at which point in the opening were you sort of on your own or out of your preparation? Well, that's a secret. That's a secret, okay. <laughs> <laughs> let's continue. Well, let's say that it wasn't too long okay. before I was uh, on my own. Uh, so... Yeah, knight b2, kind of natural, knight e7, queen f3. And look, okay, I mean, here I had to find a setup how to kind of castle, right? So I, I, I opted for knight g6, uh, knight e4 was played, and Bishop e7. So, I mean, um, it is not very quickly that I, I need several moves like king g8 or h6, king h7 at some point to finish my development. But on the other hand, I didn't see anything uh, really very quick for white. So I believe what Maria played was interesting here. Sorry. Uh, rook b8 and knight f5. Putting the knight from e4 to f5, it's... Uh, Okay, it is a bit slow as well, but it doesn't let me develop immediately. So I think it, this was okay. Then I think I had to play h5 because, okay, I, I don't want to be completely passive, of course, and I don't want uh, this queen to go on h5. So, yeah, I'm not sure b3, king g8. Okay, let's just go quickly here because I, I'm sure there were many possibilities mm -hmm. for both. But basically, you felt in control the entire time, or? I, yeah. I, I really didn't see how uh, white can create more problems. Probably there was uh, how, but uh, in this stage, I think, um, well, I didn't see anything for white. In the later stage, uh, I think we both started to play inaccurate moves. But uh, here, I, uh, I'm not sure what white could play better. No, I just didn't see any real threats, so mm. I, I don't know. So, uh, sorry, bishop g5. 
Yeah, I was not sure where to put this bishop on f6, on g5, because, uh, yeah, as I said, of course, I want to advance my pawns mm. at some point, but, uh, well, it's still too early for that. So h4, I just provoked here h4. And after bishop f6, I didn't see how actually white uh, saved this pawn, because here there was a line, if I go to uh, bishop f4, then queen h3. And uh, yeah, I mean, this uh, bishop on f4 looks very active, but I was not sure exactly how to continue because if uh, something like this, then white can simply play queen f3, threatening my pawn on h5. Mm -hmm. So here I didn't like that. And that is why I went back. And also, okay, it's a question, can white save the pawn or not? So uh, here, Okay, always there are some tactics, so mm -hmm. I have to be careful uh, because there are so many sacrifices for white. So here, and queen f3, bishop h4. And here already, yeah, I was uh, I was feeling quite good because, uh, okay, it is a second pawn, and yes, I didn't solve my problem with the king yet, but I don't believe that it's uh, such a serious problem for the moment. So here... Bishop f6, and it looks that, okay, the same position like before, just uh, one pawn, uh, one extra pawn for white. And, uh, yeah, I mean, here it was a kind of critical decision. Um, I played knight h6. Well, I mean, to be honest, I'm not sure that I have to take mm -hmm. on, on h6, but it was too tempting to to, you know, <laughs> to ignore it. But uh, I'm not sure. I mean, uh, probably even King F8 is uh, good enough. You didn't uh, have that much time at this uh, moment? Uh, no. In the game? And okay, there are some checks on A3, but, yeah. uh, and then maybe Knight uh, goes back to F5. So, I mean, yeah, I was uh, a bit short of time already here. It's like move 25, but. Do you rely mostly on intuition, you would say, when you took on h6? I mean, you said you like this move, or how much well, can you still take? Well, I mean, it should be winning for yeah. black, I think, the position after that. It's just that I I didn't play <laughs> the best moves in, in the in time travel. But, uh, of course, all this, what, we, what happened after rook takes, bishop takes, um, knight h4, there is no way for, for white to keep the peace. So... Mm -hmm. Uh, queen takes, take, and okay, I, I give uh, two pawns, but okay, this uh, I believe with the two pieces should be uh, should be completely winning now. Uh, rook d3, knight g6, okay, I'm not sure that this move is necessary, but I just wanted to be safe because, well, I mean, too many things were hanging. Yeah, the game so, went on for a while, but was there ever any moment where you felt... There might be some danger from here on out you felt in, in control. Uh, well, actually, from here on, I started to play some WS moves. Um, I'm not sure if I was really in danger, but move 40, which, which I did, was just uh, such a horrible move. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, to play f4 in this position, I mean, to block my own bishop and uh, to make uh, the task of playing e4 more difficult was just unbelievable bad decision, but I think I was lucky that it didn't really spoil the position since uh, I think it's too winning, but it creates some unnecessary complications. Psychologically, how is it? It's the last move before the time control, then you get an extra 30 minutes. Uh, what goes on in your mind when you're a little bit annoyed with yourself? Well, I mean, of course, uh, it's such an ugly move. I mean, I didn't feel very well, but uh, okay. I mean, uh, the game goes on and you just try to forget uh, what happened and uh, finish it in, uh, in a normal manner, let's say. As you said, here, luckily, it didn't matter so yeah. much. Was there any more crucial moments? Well, I'm not sure. I, I think uh, when uh, a little bit later, okay, some... Okay, here there are a lot of moves that I guess we could both play better, but uh, okay, I mean, it's just a game and uh, it's not easy, yeah? But here somewhere, okay, I started to feel that I, I might over push at some point, like when I played here in D2, 
And because of this F4, there was a lot of moments where I could just uh, lose the deep two pawn. So here I felt that I have to be really accurate and I'm not sure I was, but okay, it was good enough to win the game. But for example, here, I thought that uh, maybe white should play rook g4 instead of uh, rook h5 and just, uh, well, continue the pressure somehow. I'm not sure because, for example, if I play something like this, there are some motifs even like this and I don't know, I mean, rook d2, mm -hmm. for example. Well, I mean, I can still check. I'm not uh, forced to take it. But, uh, I mean, there were a lot of things going on. So after rook h5, I, I, I felt somehow relieved that, okay, it's not hanging anymore. So, okay, I think already here it should be, yeah, it should be about finish the game probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, I mean, I just slowly eliminate all the threats and I managed to keep my D2 pawn and uh, yeah. It was, Looks was like it. a great game, as we already mentioned before, you're now on air in the, the joint lead. Can you tell us a little bit about your ambitions right now and also coming into the tournament? Did you set yourself any goals at the start? No. Uh, well, I mean, I, I'm not this kind of player that uh, sets goals. I mean, I always play every game uh, to win it. But uh, for me, it's important that I uh, try to play some good chess again because coming back to active chess was not so easy in the last uh, one, two years. So finally, I feel like it's coming back together. So I feel a bit better playing my games. Not only do you have a daughter, you also have, are wearing many different hats. You're active, I believe, in the trainers yeah. uh, commission. But uh, would you say that playing is still your favorite thing to do in the chess world? Yeah. I mean, of course. I mean, I like to be involved in all sorts of different things and projects and training and stuff. But uh, yeah, playing, uh, of course, is completely different. And it's always great to uh, watch your games. I believe we're going to wrap up this interview as there is still some other games going on. But Antoinette, thank you so much for dropping by. Uh, congratulations again and best of luck. Thank you.